Hello, it's Phil at Digital DJ Tips, and I want to show you Pioneer's new Rekordbox DJ software. Now, Rekordbox DJ is a add-on to the Rekordbox program, which Pioneer's always had, which is the one I'm just opening here. This is the Rekordbox that you will know and love if you're a user of Pioneer equipment. It's now up to 4.0, and this is designed so that you can import your music, do lots of clever stuff to it, put cue points on it, put file information on it so on get it all exactly how you want it you can even do a little bit of mixing with this because it's got a uh, little crossfader here and you can play songs and a uh, crossfader between them and check your cue points and your mixes and work out what's going to work in your dj sets but the crucial thing is that when you're finished here you export the music to a usb stick and take it along and plug it into pioneer dj gear in the dj booth and that's where your laptop is finished it doesn't go with you however Rekordbox DJ changes all of that. This is Rekordbox 4, and within Rekordbox 4, once you've bought the Rekordbox DJ add-on, you have a separate tab at the top here called Performance. So let's go into Performance. What you're seeing here is very, very similar to DJ software of all the big brands that you would have seen before. Virtual DJ, Serato, Tractor. In fact, this looks very similar to uh, kind of a hybrid of Serato and Tractor, especially Serato, uh, although these dials here, uh, Pioneer-esque, they're very similar to the Pioneer CDJ paradigm that we've seen before uh, for showing uh, CDJs and so on. So this is more like those programs that I just spoke of and this is designed to plug a Pioneer DJ controller into it and then control using your laptop in the mix with you in the DJ booth, with you in your bedroom, with you wherever you've got that Pioneer controller in much the same way as Tractor Serato or Virtual DJ Go. So in this Short talk through, I want to show you some of the features of the software so you can see how it is the same as or maybe differs from other software. This isn't really a review because the full review is written up over on digitaldjtips.com. This is designed to watch alongside the review of the software, but also alongside our reviews of Pioneer hardware so you can get a better idea of the software that that hardware will increasingly work with. So what have we got here? Well, this is the two deck horizontal view. It's probably the most familiar view to people, especially people who've used Virtual DJ and Serato because they have a very similar view. It's the first one you're going to see. Uh, the two tracks that were loaded in the export section that we looked at earlier are still here. So I can hit play on that one there, for instance, and we have the waveform moving across the top of the screen there reasonably smoothly. Uh, the software is all reasonably smooth. Um, it's a little bit clunkier than uh, Serato, for instance, which I just find a little bit smoother and a little bit more refined. But then you would expect that with software that's been around a bit longer. I'm sure that some of the rough edges of, of this will get ironed out as time goes on. But essentially what we're looking at here is very similar to uh, DJ software with two deck views going on with those parallel waveforms at the top, making it easier to sync your tunes uh, and to check that everything is lined up as it should be. What I want to do now is talk you through some of the bits and pieces in here which maybe uh, aren't exactly the same as in other DJ software. So the view menu is our friend here. This shows the parts of the uh, software that we can see or choose to have on the screen. So for instance, I can switch over to the kind of very Serato Scratch Live-esque view here, which has got those vertical waveforms. Uh, I can switch over to four deck views. Now, as soon as you hit four deck views, uh, it's gonna start getting a little bit more cluttered and you're gonna be see a little bit less of your library uh, at the bottom here, but nonetheless, there's our four deck view. Notice I'm dragging the tracks into the waveforms at the top rather than into these areas here. They both work just fine. Uh, I'm gonna switch back to a, uh, a two deck view. You can change the views here as well, by the way. And you can have a full browser view as well. Uh, so this is kind of, you want to be looking for music rather than uh, having your whole browser taken up with those waveforms. But let's just switch back to the two channel uh, waveform view here. Uh, so before we start looking at some of the, the cool features at the top, let's just have a look at the options in the library. So you've got your collection from the record box software here. This is the stuff you've imported. You've got a list of playlists here as well. I haven't got any defined at the moment. The sampler actually has a step sequencer built into it, which I'm not gonna demonstrate because DJ Tech Tools did a really good view. Go and look at Ian Golden's uh, review of some of the more esoteric features of this software over there if you wanna see that sampler in action. Funnily enough, it isn't the first DJ software that's had a step sequencer in a sampler. The lowly uh, deduced software from Hercules with some of their uh, real consumer controllers has had that for a while, but now you've got one in here as well. Uh, you've got access to iTunes, so this is iTunes and all my iTunes playlists are tucked in here. 
uh, and then there's just a file explorer for the computer that you're on as well, along with your history. Although annoyingly, it doesn't seem to show you the tracks you've played in today's session. They don't gray out or green out or whatever. So uh, there's no easy way of seeing what you've already played, which is a little bit curious. I'm sure that'll come in a version of the software that comes soon. So you've got a few options down here. Um, if we just look at what's going on down here, you can see the, the tag configuration window here for uh, defining the tags of your, of your stuff. You've got a related track window, so this is gonna find tracks that are in a similar key or in a similar BPM or both, uh, so you can see easily other stuff that you might wanna mix with. Again, that's not new, but it's nice to see it uh, in the software, it's certainly somewhere that you'll find yourself playing out of quite a lot. Uh, this is a nice view, the related, uh, the uh, sorry, the track info window. So this is showing me the cover and uh, all the information about each track. I think some DJs, DJs will quite like that one. Uh, and, and there's a sub browser as well. So you've got two full browsers there. I'm not so sure of the usefulness of that, but it's there if you need it. But also while we're looking at these views, let me show you this, which is quite a nice one, a split screen view. Now we've got two totally separate windows here. You see that one there and that one there. Now, it doesn't make much sense on a single laptop screen like I'm showing it to you on, but if you've got a two monitor system, say you've got an installation in a club with, uh, it's not a laptop, uh, it's actually a proper you know, desktop computer there with two monitors. Well, by using that, you could have your library permanent on one monitor and then uh, lots of information about the tracks you're playing on the other one. That's a really nice feature. So there is the, uh, there's the library. Let's look up here and see some of the features we've got at the top here. Well, to start with, we've got pads here. Now these pads are gonna to correspond to uh, the pads on your DJ controller, for instance, or on increasingly on CDJs. But let's just start a tune playing there and let's have a look at what the pads do. Well, we've got definable hot cues to start with. And there's our hot cues. Uh, so we've got all our hot cues here. We've got pad effects. Now this is divided into slip loop, which is like a small loop values with a slip mode attached. They're across the top. Across the bottom, we've got delay, filter, LFO, reverb, and break. So delay is a fixed delay. An LFO filter, which is just a filter on a cycle, currently on a four beat cycle. A reverb. And a vinyl break effect. I'd call that a one button scratch mode, but it will annoy Steve, I'll scratch tutor, so I won't. Okay, so down here we have a one and two selectors. This is banks of effects on the pad, so I can select bank two. Now I've got some different effects. I've got the classic transform effect, which just basically is a rhythmic uh, cutting in and out. There's a quarter beat version. There's an eight of a beat version. Half beat. And a full beat version. And then down the bottom we have a, a fixed pitch effect instant 808 state. We've got a crush. Uh, a noise effect. And an echo. Crush and noise not so useful, I would say, but having that echo out is quite a good one. So there are effects down here. You can also edit these effects, by the way, and change some of the values I was talking about quite easily down here. And you can also affect the beats by making the, uh, the range of beat lengths shorter or longer. Uh, here as well. So there's more effects on here. In fact, effects are one of the big strong points of this software. So let's go look at a few more of them. So we've got a pretty classic effect, two effects engines here, uh, but there's a massive drop down of lots of very common effects for people who use the Pioneer mixes. Uh, so you can select your effects for these three um, different effects here. Uh, for this engine, there's another engine here, and then you can assign them to the various decks, so deck one, deck two, deck three, deck four there. Uh, but as well as these, there are the color effects. Now, anyone who is a, a Pioneer Mixer fan will know about color effects. It gives you a, a single knob for an effect for um, of your choice for each of your channels. So this is channel one that we're listening to now. It's currently set to a filter. But you can edit them. So I can go into user here uh, and I can edit from all the usual noise effects, there's a big choice here. So if I wanted to have a pitch effect, for instance, I can choose that one there, get out of edit, turn it on. And now I've got a pitch shift knob there, or choose any of the others, 
and then leave it set to that. You're set to the same effect for all of them though. So you can't just have a different effect for each knob on each deck. But I guess that's a reasonable uh, compromise. Let's just get stop editing and turn that on and listen to that one. So the color effects are there for you. The sub I spoke about earlier is down here as well. Um, if you are interested in just doing what I'm doing here and using your laptop to DJ with, the full mixer is available to you here. So I've got the mixer here with my crossfader, my channel assigns, um, and various other bits and pieces, my gain or trimming pioneer terminology there, uh, and my high mid and low and my Q if you're using it with an external sound card or a splitter cable, you can use Q there. Um, and there's a record button up here as well, which is, uh, you can set it to auto records over a certain level or you can have control over your recording down here. So they're kind of the main features of the software going on here. Uh, let's go and have a little look at, oh well before I forget, one thing that the mixer doesn't seem to have that I couldn't find is any crossfader, um, any crossfader behavior. So you can't uh, type that crossfader up so it's a scratch fader or have a smooth house fader for instance. I couldn't see any fader curves anywhere, maybe I've missed it. So I want to show you, uh, just to give you a better idea of what else is in the software, talk you through the configuration panel. So this is a configuration panel, uh, be quite familiar to people who are used to the one in Rekordbox 4 itself. Uh, across the top here you have your various tabs and down here you have the stuff you can do. So in the view you just got stuff like font sizes, you can arrange uh, whether, you, whether or not you see your iTunes and your Explorer and so on. So you can take stuff away you, you don't want. Uh, you can decide how the waveforms are stacked, whether you have decks 1, 2, 3 and 4 or um, options three, one, two, and four, depending on how you've got your gear set out, what type of gear you're using there. Uh, this is where you sort your audio out. You can do your input and output channels here, just like in any DJ software. And there's a setting utility as well. Um, you can also uh, tell it what, can, what DJ controller you're using, uh, which we're gonna get onto in a second, but that just makes all that stuff easier. So track analysis, it's a normal and dynamic. If you are analyzing music that's non-EDM, you can select dynamic here. A lot of this stuff is in record box four, by the way, as in the, the normal software that you just use to analyze uh, your files with. So you'll be familiar with this if you're a record box user. Um, and you can turn on and off key analysis and where you write the value of the key to as well. Um, the controller stuff is here. There's quite a lot of stuff to help you with your controllers. You've got vinyl speed adjust, jog wheel rotation, uh, various other uh, safeguards on needle lock, eject, and so on. Uh, and then there is Here's the mix of stuff and here's where I proved myself completely wrong because I've just discovered the cross fader curve and channel fader curve. So there they are. You also get the EQ uh, isolator or, or more subtle EQ settings here and auto gain. Uh, and the effects here, you can uh, do a couple of things to the effects. The keyboard one is the one I really wanted to show you because as I say, I'm, I'm using this on a laptop. And here you can basically define almost everything about the software and choose your keyboard shortcuts. You could set up a very, very powerful backup system on your laptop here. Uh, so you could DJ from just your laptop should you need to. It's a very nice set of mappings here uh, and it's very comprehensive. Uh, and I was quite um, impressed with this. Uh, you can save and load your uh, keyboard mappings there as well. Um, so over in the advanced section, here we just have a various database and browse stuff. You can set colors and so on. Uh, you notice Kuvo um, every, every now and then in the software when we've been looking through it. Kuvo is the system where Pioneer in equipped DJ booths can look at what you're playing and make it public through a fiendishly clever uh, app for iOS and Android. Uh, but there's, that's definitely a story for another day. And then you've got your license uh, here. So that's basically uh, what the software can do, the stuff that we've spotted in it that we think is going to be of interest to you. Uh, and as I say, if you want to see our, hear more views on this software, where it's going to be used, how we think it'll do, go and read the review uh, of Rekordbox uh, DJ, which is linked to underneath this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, I've been Phil for Digital DJ Tips. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, the subscribe and join links are below me.